a lot of people, when I meet them, they come up and they talk to me about politics. And as of late, um, those conversations have either been about the president or about the mayoral race in Portland. And a lot of undecided people are still out there, as you've seen from different polls. One of the things that comes up about you so often, and I'm wondering why you think this is, is that people have a hard time trying to state what it is you stand for exactly. Your challenger, Sarah Iannarone, own, whether they, they believe in what she stands for or not, there's, there's no doubt they understand you know, what she has to say. But I think oftentimes people can't, can't come to a conclusion on you. Um, you've said before that, I, if I'm right in, in quoting it, that compromise is not a dirty word. But, you know, in politics, often you're defined by moments where you take a stand. Where do you think you have defined yourself by taking a stand? Yeah, thank you for that. First of all, uh, I was instrumental in taking a stand to make sure that the state acted quickly and decisively to stop the spread of the COVID crisis. Uh, there, there were obviously some people who pushed back against that, but that was decisive leadership. I provided decisive leadership again when I was the first jurisdictional leader, along with uh, our economic development agency, Prosper Portland, to convene a large group of community stakeholders and you know, from small business, from neighborhoods, from elsewhere to get the first dollars out the door to support households that were in need or small businesses that uh, were in need of support. Uh, I played an instrumental role in working with all of our partners to make sure that vulnerable populations were served as a key component, including um, making sure that, that we had adequate shelter space for our unhoused neighbors in the community. Uh, I've done it on the environment when I took a bold stand against the expansion of Zenith Energy, which wanted to increase the number of oil trains coming from our community. I took a bold stand when I committed the city to 100% renewable energy. I took a bold stand when I slowed down the deployment of the dollars from the 2016 Portland housing bond so that once again, we could engage community partners, uh, including uh, uh, organizations that represent people of color and immigrants and others in the community to shape that bond. And as a result, it's it's not only a successful bond, it's exceeded every single promise that we made during that campaign. I showed bold leadership when I uh, made a clear statement about uh, where I wanted the police bureau to go when instead of, of continuing with our internal police chief, who is a great guy, and I got along with really well. But instead, I needed my police chief. So I worked with the community to uh, identify Danielle Outlaw as the right candidate. She was the first uh, African American woman to serve in the capacity of police chief in the history of this city. I made a bold statement when during my last campaign, I promised that my mayoral administration would be reflective of the diversity in this community. And I hired as my chief of staff, the first African American man to ever hold that position, Maurice Henderson. Uh, I continue to do it by having a staff that is over 75% represented by people of color. It's a majority women. Uh, and we continue to to reflect the needs of those uh, who uh, are most in needs uh, of those services. I reflected bold leadership uh, when I stood up the first non-armed wing of the Portland Police Bureau, the, the Portland Public Safety Support Specialists. I did it again when I ended the dysfunctional COAB, which was our community engagement process around the U.S. Department of Justice Settlement Agreement, instead put in the Portland Committee on community engaged policing. Uh, I did it again when I partnered with Commissioner Hardesty on the Portland street response as an alternative to sending police out to work with people in crisis on the streets, but instead send EMTs uh, and uh, uh, mental health workers out into the community. Uh, I've done Can it we, previously. Uh, I'm, I'm not even halfway through my list. I know, I should ask you a shorter question. Gosh. Okay. Well, um, so yeah. I, the, the uh, my, I, you question. know, well, why do you think people, why do you, I mean, we can, you literally could have taken up the full 13 minutes of the interview answering that question. So why, I could take why do I hear that? First hour yeah. of this conversation answering that question. Why do you, why do you think people, why do you think people have that, that impression sometimes of, of, of your, your, your time as mayor then? Um, I, I would say a couple of things. Number one, this administration has been hit with an unprecedented number of urgent crises. 
And you know, it, it's, it's COVID, it's the economy, it's the national calls for racial justice and equity, it's calls for police reform, it's violence that we're periodically seeing at night on our streets, it's the homeless crisis getting worse, it's livability issues by litter uh, and uh, other issues, it's the budget crisis confronting the city of Portland. And my administration is at the nexus of each and every one of these crises. And so um, we're managing multiple crises simultaneously, and I think that has something to do with it. And obviously there's more that my administration needs to do in terms of communicating clearly and regularly with the public about what we're doing, why we're doing it, how we're doing it, who we're doing it with, how is it working, how is the community engaged, what are we hearing from the community? And all of these things are going full bore, but I don't think we've really had the opportunity to, to share that information the way I would like to see that information shared. And that's part of the reason that the gym is here now. Uh, that's part of the reason that we've expanded our communications team uh, to not only get information out, but we've also expanded the capacity of my own mayoral staff to get better feedback and be more inclusive of information coming in from the community. And so I, I think all of those things will help. Um, I think some people, they found a, your stance around federal involvement and your stance as police commissioner with police tactics early on to be kind of contradictory. I think is one of the, the ways where people found you to be kind of going a little bit back and forth. Um, for instance, when the, the, the protests and the violent protests first started, months and months ago, a lot of the tactics that were being used, uh, forceful tactics by police, including the use of tear gas, were one of the things that protesters continue to cite as reasons to come back and build encouragement night after night. When the federal government came in, you kind of switched teams and stood against the federal government when, for the most part, the tactics mirrored what the Portland Police Bureau had been doing and I, now I, still I strong, continue to no. do. No, no, I strongly dispute that. And even the Portland Police Bureau leadership would strongly dispute that. The tactics that were used by the federal government when they, I mean, for, first of all, let me step back and just say, I have a good relationship with our local federal officers. We've had a long standing close relationship and close ties that have been effective in addressing all kinds of crime, whether it's drug trafficking, sex trafficking and the like. But what was different was when the federal government flew in people from all over the United States to uh, create a stronghold here in the city of Portland, they were absolutely indiscriminate. They were absolutely uh, acting in a manner that greatly increased not only the size of the crowds, but the anger and the energy of the crowds. And we're still dealing with that today. Our tactics, uh, while sometimes indiscriminate and sometimes, in my opinion, overbearing and all those, we, we have a process for investigating and holding officers accountable here in Portland when there, there is uh, an action that doesn't comport with, with training or directives. But the federal government came in here. Let's remember what they did. It wasn't just the tear gassing on a nightly basis. It wasn't just the lack of warning. But they were literally scooping people off the streets in unmarked vans, not giving them their due process, not telling them who they were or why they were being forced into vans. The Portland Police Bureau never engaged in any tactics even remotely like that. So it was very easy for me to differentiate between the rules that we have in place and the accountability mechanisms we have in place as imperfect as they are and the heavy handed overbearing probably unconstitutional tactics that were used by the federal government. Uh, that wasn't switching team. That was me being consistent. Well, I think some people would, would argue to where, while some of that is, is true, as far as the tactics the police were using, the Portland Police Bureau also used force and shot tear gas into crowds prior to the federal government arriving. Indeed, they did. And uh, in cases where they did not comport with their training or their directives, they will be held accountable. There, there have been numerous um, investigations referred to the Independent Police Review Commission. Uh, I have nothing to do with that. The police bureau has nothing to do with that. That resides within the city auditor. Uh, and even the Portland Police Bureau have referred cases to the Independent Police Review Commission when they see their own doing things that are out of line. 
But if, if you saw a federal officer who is out of line, uh, not only were they not wearing their IDs oftentimes or identifying who they were, there is no process for accountability. There will not be any opportunity for people who are wronged by the federal government to seek justice or frankly for the federal government to even indicate whether they understood that there was a problem or how they're going to change. The Portland Police Bureau is held to a very different standard. How important do you think Joanne Hardesty will be to this mayoral election? I don't know. Um, you know, that's that's anybody's guess. You know, I, I get along with with Commissioner Hardesty. We we agree on some things. We disagree on others, but we have a good professional working relationship. And I expect that to continue. Well, she came out with her kind of plan. She continues to lobby to be police commissioner. She had her kind of four or five point plan. And you have said time and again that it kind of mirrors things that you're doing or have already done. Um, you have also said, and you, you said to the Willamette Week, that she has made some statements that make it problematic for her to be the police commissioner. And I assume you're talking about the interview she did in Marie Claire magazine where she made some accusations against police starting fires that were, were untrue. Does that still weigh into your decision making when it comes to her taking that type of leadership role? I, I believe all of us under this level of duress in this situation where the public spotlight is on us constantly, where we are trying to work through multiple challenges together, we all make mistakes, myself included. I, I have no monopoly on the truth. I am certainly human. I make my own share of mistakes. The question is, how do you handle those mistakes? Commissioner Hardesty walked those statements back. She made it clear publicly that she was mistaken. She apologized for making those comments. And, uh, I, I hold her at her word that she understands that those comments were inaccurate and potentially hurtful. So we've moved on. Now the question is, where do we go from here? And I've told Commissioner Hardesty, as I've told other folks, let's wait and see who is on the council come January. Let's have a council-wide discussion about the best way to allocate bureaus. I've made it clear that all bureaus, including the police bureau, are on the table for consideration. Uh, I've let Commissioner Hardesty know that, but when you look at her her plan around uh, um, the kinds of things that the values that she supports, increased accountability. Well, uh, I supported her referral to the ballot of an overhaul of her oversight and accountability mechanism, negotiating a better contract. I'm the first mayor, at least in modern history, to engage all of my commissioners around the negotiations of the contract when it comes to non-police alternatives to engaging uh, with the community. I'm, I'm Commissioner Hardesty's co-champion of the Portland Street response. We're working together on that effort. Uh, and when she talks about enhanced community engagement, I already completely reinvented that process through the creation of the independent Portland Committee on Community Engaged Policing. Which well, that's kind of is, my that's kind of my point a little bit because the two of you, um, as far as your point is concerned, you're kind of going down the same path that she would go down anyway, which is I think why a lot of people are kind of using this as one of their deciding factors if they are undecided right now because if they go with Sarah Ian Aron, uh, Commissioner Hardesty will become police commissioner, and the idea is if they go with you, she will not. And is it is is the, is the I'm, line? I'm not. I'm not willing. No, I'm not willing to make that commitment one way or the other. What I've said publicly is what I believe. Come January, when we know who is on the council, what people's not only interests are, but what their capacity is and how best to cluster the bureaus so that they communicate and coordinate and work well together, all of the bureaus will be up for play, including the police bureau. And um, yeah, so that that may come to fruition or it may not, but I'm not making a hard, fast commitment to any commissioner right now about any bureau. 